Most modern systems have one major flaw. Now, if you're anything like me, you've probably purchased a computer online off some online marketplace. You've had it race to your address. You've quickly unboxed it. And likely it's come with some pretty decent hardware. Out of the box, you get good experience. There may not be two CPUs, but at least one. Lots of RAM, got ample GPU power, hopefully lots of hard drive space and powerful PSU. But there is one problem. This PC has it, and this system has it, and this streamer's PC has it. She hasn't even realized yet. Now you're thinking, is it a slow, outdated CPU? No. Is it slow or insufficient RAM? Probably not. Is it an aged GPU? Maybe, but probably not the real problem. Slow drives or maybe insufficient storage space? It could be that. Now for most of these problems that we run into, we'd probably log into ChatGPT, do a quick search, find the guide, grab a screwdriver, do a quick uh, bit of adjustment and problems fixed, right? Wrong. And to explain why, I need to take you back in time, to a time when things were simpler. That there is 1986, a 1.44 megabyte floppy drive. Back then, microprocessors were the size of NVMe, so I'm not joking. The keyboards were wavy, we can wave that goodbye, and the rollerball mouse, enough said they were incredible. Now maybe you had an Intel 286 PC running MS-DOS 3.2 and You've probably seen this game. Man, I love this game. I spent so many hours on it. Really teaches you patience. These old games, really, really good value. You've probably played this one as well. Alien Mutant Space Bats. That is such a cool game. Oh, I'll quickly give you a demo. I don't think I've ever actually lost on the first level. It's really easy. You just take out a few bats and then you jump onto the next level. It's a brick. Oh, that's all good. And on level 7, man, these things are really tough. You gotta dodge the bombs, and then we got this... Okay, so it teaches you patience as well. That's really frustrating now. Uh, maybe you can guess this game. I guarantee you won't get it. There's no way. I must be the only one who played this game. Really good. And no, it's not Star Wars. If that was your guess, you got it wrong. It's such a good game. Now, we could play for hours, whether it's old games or modern games, but all of those have one common problem limited hard drive storage space. Now back then the problem was you could only fit one game or on one of those floppy drives. But these days there's quite a lot of storage. You've got 16 gig chips on your RAM. You've got an outrageous 24 gig on your GPU. That's gigabytes. And you've got maybe 24 RAM slots on your motherboard and likely two CPUs, but only four hard drive slots or bays. Now sure, you could fit larger drives. I mean, I myself have between a 2TB and up to a 16TB. But there's only four bays. How do we solve modern problems? Log into ChatGPT like I have here and you'd ask a question. Right now we're trying to solve expanding storage effectively on our computer. And from the AI's advice here, it sounds like there might be some storage uh, solutions here, but Narrowing down our solutions, I'm particularly looking for something that fits into my 5.25 inch bay. Now these are some excellent suggestions from ChatGPT, particularly the ICDoc Tough Armor MB996SP-6SB. That is a fantastic adapter. Some of the others are pretty good quality as well. I haven't checked all of them out just yet, but they're pretty good. Should we check one of them? I feel like it could be worth going onto Amazon quickly and having a look. Let's quickly load up one of them. Okay, that's the first one it recommended. That does look really good. You can fit six SSDs within that particular adapter. And I mean, it looks like it's hot swap. That's exactly what you want. How much does it cost? 400, wait, is that US dollar? 400? Okay, so it's maybe a little bit expensive. I mean, it, definitely within our budget. That's definitely something we consider, but uh, should we go back and see if there's another option? It must be something cheaper. That's way too much. Okay, let's try the next one. Okay, the next adapter here that I think is really, really cool. This is the Icy Dock Tough Armor NVMe Storage Bay. This is the MB699VP-B. That has to be one of the coolest adapters I've seen because you can fit, and in particular, the U.2 interface SSDs, which typically have NVMEs within them, which is really, really cool. So that's an amazing option to expand your storage on your PC. 
Uh, hopefully the price is good. Let's uh, check out oh, even as fans and like metal construction. That's amazing. How much does it cost? 630. Is that US dollar? Australia? Man, that's that's a lot of money. I mean, it's great. Now there's one other adapter that I must introduce you to. This is the Icy Dock 4 Bay M.2 NVMe Bay. This one is absolutely incredible. Can you imagine loading up your 5.25 inch base with NVMEs? That's absolutely a dream. Uh, but so is the price. These are quite expensive. That is going to be uh, well beyond what I would be willing to pay for such an adapter. But wow, that'd be a really nice thing to add on. Money. I mean, it's great. It really does look good. But that's not quite the price point I was hoping for. I was hoping for much, much less. Let's try one more. Ah, the Icy Dock. This is really, really cool as well. Okay, that's got six bays. Hot swap as well. I bet it's got a fan on it. And... The price looks a little bit better. Wait, that schematic looks like it's off the HP Z8. That's a funny coincidence. But looking at this particular adapter, I mean, that's a much better price point. Definitely a solid option. Let's go back and check. Okay, there's no others. You know what? Um, this is great, but we're wanting an adapter, maybe like 10, maybe up to like 50 US dollars. Not being cheapskates or anything, but we want something affordable and still applicable to our 5.25 inch base. Okay, those are good options, but I don't see anything there that's great. So what if I said I have an adapter that you can fit to your PC, doesn't matter what it is, as long as it has a 5.25 inch bay port or bay, that's really important. Uh, DVD slots of that size, right? So you can take out your DVD writer or reader. And what if I said it could fit six SSDs or two SSDs and one 3.5 inch hard drive? It's not even going to cost that much. Now you're intrigued, I can tell. And we'll quickly update ChatGPT. Turns out Racer Z has a video on this, and you're watching it right now. And the AI just helped us get specifically onto where we're going. Uh, so well done on that. And I guess it's nice to be courteous to the AI. So we'll quickly say uh, further ado or say goodbye and enjoy the weather where you are and have a great day. I'm sure the AI understands what I meant. Let's go right into it. More data storage. Need more data storage. Whoa, hi there. Sorry, I wasn't sleeping on the job. Uh, you definitely didn't catch me having a power nap. But let's quickly go through storage upgrade. We're going to take four terabyte Samsung 870 Evos. We're going to create a RAID 1 mirror, which will provide data redundancy for critical data. Something like this future footage. Uh, you're going to be really excited on that one. Very powerful workstation, but more of a teaser on that later. For now, check out the video outline. We're going to go through unboxing the SSDs, fitting them to the adapter, slotting them into our 5.25 inch bay in the HP Z840 workstation. Uh, take a special note here. There will be a future video on a different adapter, which I think is really good value as well. Give me a quick sneak preview. Why not? Because it's relevant. It's also an adapter, but this one's specifically only for SSDs. Oh, that looks like a lot of damage. Hopefully it survived transit. Okay, it doesn't look too bad, it's well packaged, but we're going to throw in some SSD into this adapter in a future video. Stay tuned for that, it's quite cool, it's got fans to actually help cool the SSDs, not that they get that warm. But anyway, let's go for this adapter. This is the related All Master adapter, which should allow a total of 6 SSDs to be fitted, which is pretty impressive numbers. Or you can go for 2 SSDs and one 3.5 inch bay. So lots of good options here. We're going to have to really think this through in terms of the best configuration, but I think I'm going to go for two SSDs and one 3.5 inch hard drive. So let's get this adapter out. Wait, what? It's empty. It's like, I've already unboxed it. We're uh, going back in time here, but here's the SSDs of interest. I'm going to go for the 870 Evo, two of them at four terabytes, and we're going to throw them into this adapter. We're also going to take that 3.5 inch hard drive. I'll show you which one in a second. But, man, that's looking pretty cool. Lots of screws to keep track of here. I don't think it'll be too hard to fit. I don't even think we need the instructions. We'll just go straight forward. And take notes, the old master brand. There's lots of deviations of this particular one on online marketplaces. But this is the one that I use, and so far it's been uh, pretty reliable for me. But there it is. Check that out. The 870 Evo. Let's quickly unbox with my handy pocket knife. That was a birthday gift. Really proud of that one. And we got our gloves on. Safety first. Trying to do this uh, carefully would be uh, nothing worse than having a bit of an accident on camera. That'd be a nightmare. But there it is. And uh, here's our SSD. Standard packaging, nothing unusual. We do have the manual. We're not going to spend time on that now. You can do that in your own time if you uh, desire, but there it is. Four terabyte SSD. These have VNAND. They're pretty powerful and generally pretty fast speeds. We should get around 550 megabytes on read and maybe slightly less on write. Uh, pretty easy fit, no complaints. It's actually quite a good fit, so very well designed on these adapters, and we will have to get at least four screws to mount those up. 
And there's our second SSD and test fit. Okay, easy. Where's the hard drive? Good question. Let me show you the hard drive. Now, this is really cool. Also quite an expensive drive, but if you do need a scratch drive, this is exactly what I'm going to use this drive for. It's a 16 terabyte Iron Wolf Pro, which is a very, very large capacity drive. Right now, they're on pretty good prices if you shop around. Let's grab that knife again quickly, get this anti-static open. But I'm going to go for this drive because they're pretty reliable. So it's meant to be more like a NUS grade uh, hard drive. And I guess they can serve us every day if they need to. And I'm going to use this as a scratch drive so I can sort out some of these other hard drives that have sort of accumulated over time and try and condense them all into one neat package. But there it is, very easy to fit. That does look like the screw holes are going to align quite well. So let's get at it. Where's these uh, mounting screws? But just before we do, check this out. This is how we would normally have to mount our SSDs in these workstations. You get these little caddies, this particular one's from HP, that allows us to fit our SSD into the little, uh, shall we say, carrier. From the carrier, we can then mount the carrier into a secondary carrier. Man, that gets complicated quick. And then that carrier goes into the caddy that goes into the Z840. Three caddies for one SSD, that's messy, but take note, the SSDs are offset, so it's actually kind of important uh, to use the right adapter, otherwise you can damage your uh, SATA connections or SAS SATA connections on these. Let's go for it. Oh, master, wait, we've already checked. Wait, now there's an ad adapter in there. Where'd that come from? Anyway, we need the hardware out of this one. The other one was empty, uh, probably in use. This particular one, we're going to the Z440, which I've released the video. Check it out. Case swap, really cool. Now, I'm not fluent in Chinese, but we need those hardware screws in order to figure this out, and... Lots of ways we can mount this, but we're just going to go for the tried and tested here. We'll figure it out as we go. Uh, come along for the journey. Okay, there's our rack screw. That one looks a little bit longer than the others. Potentially the same pitch on those screws. So that could be useful, and that's the hard drive one there. So I guess we want the hard drive ones, but you'll notice I've actually used the incorrect screw initially because I couldn't get the hard drive ones to mount easily. They're too short. But with a little bit of a trick here, we first mount the longer ones. And then we just use the shorter ones. We proc those SSDs up into their spot. You can obviously just use something like a, a random stick or a pencil or something. You can proc them up as well. Same difference, just for demo there. But wow, how'd that get so dusty? Looks like they gave some dirt in that packaging. Or maybe somehow I got some dirt in there. Anyway, this is ready to go. I'm pretty happy with fitment. I do question these uh, 16 terabyte drives. Do they create a lot of vibration? Is this going to be a problem with this adapter? Yeah, oh, this might be a problem. That's probably why I would recommend a different adapter for hard drives in particular. Maybe this is better for SSDs. You could fit six SSDs. That's a pretty good deal. But let's see what it's like. And I'm curious because they say you can only fit two, but normally you can fit six. Surely I can squeeze another one in there. Is that going to work? Okay, okay. Fair enough. They've done their job there. You can't fit another unless you do something really weird. But there it is. It does not fit. Now, this is the HP Z840. You may have seen related videos. And I've done quite a few now. That was our 10 gigabit NIC. This is the... Jehi air-cooled NVMe adapter to allow fitting one NVMe, which is quite handy. And this is the Zotac Amp Hollow Extreme RTX 3090 Ti, which is my tried and tested graphics card for making all the footage that I create. Really, really handy. This is a riser adapter that I installed underneath my GPU to give me access to that PCI slot that we normally lose. And this is a riser adapter that I'm going to throw in the bin because it had lots of problems. I'm giving up on this one. It's a really bad brand. Don't buy this one. I don't even know what the brand is. So I won't even recommend it. Now, this is the Gigabyte Aorus. Absolutely exceptional for your NVMEs. I've got four NVMEs in this adapter. But truth be told, I've already replaced this one because I found it was a little bit slow, uh, which is surprising because it's meant to be a Gen 4 adapter. But check a related video. This is the fan module for the Z840, and check it out, it's actually still looking pretty tidy. I cleaned this out probably like eight months ago now. It's actually still looking relatively dust-free. Might have to do another cleaning cycle soon enough, but there it is. Now for the adapter. Very straightforward to fit on these. You will see there's this little tab there. Still lots of dust on that thing. Anyway, you'll see the little tab there. Normally, for these bays, you just lift on that tab, and you'll be able to slot in your adapter. There is a problem. The old master's not really made for these workstations. And in my experience, it doesn't actually mount. There's not much you can do because it's all closed off. You've got the HP latch on there. I do suspect you can pull that off if you're really dedicated. You might find a way to mount a screw in there, but without some custom hardware, this isn't easily mountable. You will see the screw holes. So if you get creative, go into your hardware box, you may find something that'll go in and actually hold this together. Now, what is this? This looks like a complete mess. Who did the wiring on this machine? Okay, truth be told, it's my handiwork. And uh, off camera, yeah, not pretty, but on camera, obviously you want to make this look a little bit better. So I'm going to try and cable manage that 
absolute disaster. Uh, yes, not my best work, and that's definitely going to create problems, especially with that fan module. It's going to pinch and cause all sorts of problems, and not even this Valkyrie strip is going to save us. But I'll show you how to tidy that up soon. But anyway, we need SATA cables. This is going to be our data cable. In this particular application, I will need three additional cables. And if you're like me, you probably have a random box filled with adapt adapter cables because there was that one time that you didn't have adapter cables and you needed them. You got frustrated, so you bought every adapter on eBay that you can find, at least one or two of them, and now you have a box full of random cables. So handy! And probably from old machines you stripped down. So these are lots of random odd cables. Forgive me, I'm not all precise here, just taking whatever I can get my hands on. But let's quickly wire them up. One data cable each. I'm going to connect them to my SAS ports on this motherboard. Mostly because the SATA ports are basically occupied. Makes no real difference, they will use the SAS controller on the motherboard instead of the SATA controller. But in terms of performance, we should see the same speeds, or at least I'm hopeful. We also need to connect the power. Now you have some options here, but limited on this workstation, because there's only so many uh, cables here. But we will have to use our Molex adapter, and we're going to convert that into SATA power. You do need special adapter cables, check out the ones that I've listed here. There are quite a few options. I've got a bit of a fruit salad going on there, but that's not looking too bad. Would you pass that as like good? Would you give it like a, a 4 out of 10 on cable management? Come on, you've got to give me some credit. There's not, no ability to cable manage here. Okay, that looks like a pinch hazard, and let's do a hardware test. Does this even fit back together? Okay, that's not going to work. This is a disaster. Okay, give me like two hours. I'm going to see if I can tidy this up. I'm not joking. It probably took two hours because uh, that's a really, really messy setup there. Now, for a little bit of fiddling, I actually found a way to cable manage. But it's only really possible because of the knock to a fans that I installed in order to fit that GPU. The GPU is oversized, it literally just fits. So those uh, knock to a fans provide dedicated cooling for the hard drives mounted in the original caddies, as well as getting some airflow over the PCIe base, which is quite uh, handy there. But how do I cable manage these cables? I'm actually going to try and route them above the fans. So pretty important not to get them into the fans. That's happened at least once. But with a little bit of cable management, a little bit of cable ties, this is the end result, which I'm relatively happy with. Hopefully it'll give me a half decent score. That's the best I can do. This is a pretty messy setup either way. Probably could do with more cable ties, but that's not looking too bad. We got that little Valkyrie strap. I'm trying my best. And uh, I think that's looking okay. That's, yeah, that's not too bad. That looks managed. Now this is one random power cable that I'm still unhappy with, but that one is kind of critical because it's powering my USB 3.1 PCIe adapter, which is very handy for uh, like 4K cameras and things like that. Awesome. Let's quickly get this hardware back in. I'm happy with the cable management. I suspect this will all go back together perfectly. And uh, don't judge the hardware protruding from the case too harshly. I promise it works and it's reliable. So far so good. That is a 10 gigabit network card that gives me ultra fast speeds communicating to my NAS related video, the HP Z440 case swap, where I had many hard drives currently sitting on about 60 terabyte loaded into that NAS. And this is how I talk to that NAS via the Ethernet cables. And uh, a little bit of Acro straps go a long way. Stay tuned though, in the future I'll show you an even better method to mount your hardware outside your case. In fact, should I give you a preview? I'll give you a quick preview. Truth be told, the Z840 is getting a little bit old. I'm trying to future-proof my system. This is what I came up with. We're jumping well into the future. You're not meant to see this yet, but I think it's time. You need to know. This is the HP Z8 G4 workstation. More or less the upgrade on the Z840. Now, should you be considering this upgrade? I did the pricing on the CPU upgrades. I was looking at CPUs for the Z840. They cost more than more powerful Gen 1 scalable Xeons. So my logic there was, and that does look like a bit of a blockade, we'll have to ram our way through. Should we do some quick sneak peek on this machine? I feel like you're, you're really interested now. Let's have a quick look at it. We have dual scalable Gen 1 Xeons. These are the golds. 6142. Those were the best I could get my hand on for a small sum of money. I guarantee you they were cheaper than the equivalent, uh, should we say something like the E52697As, which is what I had my heart set on. We've also managed to fit all my hardware in there, and there's actually spare PCI slots. We've managed to get the old master adapter in there, allowing me to run four SSDs. I've only got two, the same ones from this video, future video for that. I did have some trouble with the RAM. For some reason, I couldn't do the RAM upgrade. Full video on it. Got a video for swapping the Z840 into this machine and lots of videos coming out on the HP Z8 G4. Stay tuned for that. Such a cool system. 
Still a little bit pricey, but right now the Z4 and even the Z6 are pretty affordable, and we'll check out how to do the RAM upgrade in the future. Stay tuned for those awesome videos, promise. But here it is, we're gonna initialize our hard drives. In this case, there were three. We had our 16 terabyte and then the two four TBs. Now those two four TBs, I do wanna to pull together and giving us some redundancy and allowing us to pull those two hard drives into one solid drive of four terabyte capacity. Now it's a little bit wasteful. We are losing literally four terabytes, but this is to provide some sense of security in case that data disappears because hard drives are known to fail and fingers crossed none of my hard drives ever fail. But if it does happen, hopefully that mirror will give me at least one fallback or that's the hope. They're pretty easy. Once we pull those together, we hit next. You can assign a drive letter if you so desire. Uh, I usually try and populate whatever's uh, non-chaotic, starting from the bottom or starting from the top, whatever works. And very handy to name the drive. What should we name this particular volume? I mean, the most mod logical is going to be to include that it is a RAID pool. So I guess we'll go RAID 1 because that's what it is. And uh, should we do SSD because it's meant to be fast storage? Fast storage for things like video editing, or at least that's what I'm hoping. So hopefully it's good for video editing. We don't need to format this because the drives are brand new, so they should be completely clean. So I guess we'll click next. Always important here, just to double check and reflect, is this really what you wanna do? Cause you're gonna wipe all the data on those drives. Normally you'll destroy any archive stored on there. They're brand new disks, so it's okay. We can totally do this. But double checking that settings, we are gonna lose a little bit of capacity due to the overhead on formatting of drives and different formats for an NTFS. On this particular one, critical for Windows and final warning message. Take a good read before you click yes on these in case you lose data, always be very careful. As far as I can tell, that's looking okay. We're gonna convert it into a dynamic disk managed by Windows 10, software RAID as they call it, RAID 1 mirror. I think we're good to go, should we hit okay? Once we do it, the drives are gonna be more or less demolished and then reformatted and rebuilt. Now, important consideration here, this particular, should we say, software RAID is gonna take ages to set up. I'm not joking. Probably took me like seven hours, much longer than I anticipated. And I had to leave it. I think it's, I had to switch the machine over like 4 a.m. It was horrible waiting that long, but it took ages. So keep that in mind. This will take a very long time to set up. Now you're probably wondering what sort of speeds do we get on a RAID 1? Well, here it is. DaVinci, or in this case, Blackmagic Designs disk speed test. But around 470 megabytes per second on write speed, and around 520 megabytes per second on read speed, which is not too bad. I'm hoping that it'll be sufficient for me to do 4K editing at 60 FPS or 60 frames per second at the very least. In terms of real world file transfers, these are really fast drives. Right? We should get 500 megabytes per second. Let's quickly chuck a two terabyte uh, archive of data on there. And that's gonna take one day at one megabyte per second. It's okay, truth be told, it's still transferring to this day and it's been like six months. So man, these things are slow. They're not as fast as they need to be, but it depends on the files we transfer. It's kind of complicated. But anyway, hopefully you enjoyed that video. Ah, you're subscribed, excellent, really good to see. You. Well done on that. That makes you a VIP member as well. Well done. Uh, awesome to see you're supporting the channel. Take note, lots of cool things coming up. Stay tuned for lots of cool videos. The HP Z8 is absolute beast of a machine. I'll try and persuade you on why you should consider upgrading eventually. And man, it's getting really hot in here. Okay, the helmet just doesn't want to come off. It's really strange. It's almost like it's glued on. I've got so used to it now. See you on the next video.